I don't know why I do this to myself, but I bought 20 more broken Nintendo Switches to see if I can fix them and if I can make money. Let's take them apart. I paid a total of $1,815 for this entire lot of 20 units, and that comes out to $90.75 each. There's gonna be three things we do to start the diagnosis on these 20 Nintendo Switches. The first thing is we're gonna check for power. The second thing is we're gonna check the USB-C port to see if it's crunched. And number three, we're gonna check the charge current. Once we know the charge current, that'll give us a hint to what might be going on inside the system, and then we'll go inside and see if we can fix it. Now for everyone's favorite part, let's take them apart. Let's just start with this first one on the top. So we'll check for power first. For sure, no power. Let's check the USB-C charge port. I see no problems there. And when we plug in the charge cable, we get a 0 0.28, 0 0.08. It's really jumping around there. There's nothing else we can tell without taking it apart, so we're gonna do that next. I'll be using a precision electric screwdriver and I'll leave the link in the description below if you would like that for yourself. I find it to be super helpful. It saves my wrist from all the twisting and turning and makes it so I can fix a lot more switches in one day. Well, I can immediately see what the problem is here. If you look right here, the liquid indi indicator label is pink. We've got some corrosion down here as well as corrosion down here and over here. So anytime I see corrosion on a board, the first thing we need to do is get the motherboard out, check all the damage, clean off all the corrosion and see if there's anything that we can fix on it. Sometimes I find liquid damage that is easily fixable. Other times it is very difficult to impossible to fix. So we've got the main corrosion areas around here. No corrosion up here, we've definitely got some here and over here. Now as far as the other side of the board goes, we've got a little bit there, a little bit there. No corrosion up here. The game card slot has a lot of corrosion here. I can't tell if there's any inside there. Possibly. There's none on the connector. This actually might be savable. We'll figure that out in a little bit here. So I'm actually fairly hopeful on this board. I think I might be able to fix it, but I gotta get all that corrosion cleaned off and then we can test it more. And one of the worries you have anytime you see corrosion on these is that the liquid gets in here and gets under these chips and corrodes them underneath. Same with this big chip here. I don't see, it's definitely rusted right here on the case around it, but I don't see any problems underneath. So I'm hoping, at least a little bit I can see underneath, I'm hoping that there isn't actually any corrosion under here. There's not really any way to know for sure, unless you took them off, which then you'd have to reball them, which is a pain. So I'm not gonna take them off. I'm gonna hope that they're fine underneath and we'll get the rest of this board cleaned and then we'll see. So I've got it fairly clean. I'm gonna use my digital multimeter to check for shorts. So these are capacitors. It should beep when I touch one side and not beep when I touch the other side. And you can see that all these capacitors are good. It beeps when there is very little to no resistance. This is just a coil of wire. And there should be very little resistance, which there is. And the fuse, very little resistance there as well. Let's check the video chip on the back. This is the video chip right here. It 
Okay, everything's normal there. So this motherboard actually seemed to clean up, clean up okay, so I have high hopes for it. I'm gonna get it put back installed and see if we can get the battery to charge and also try a known good battery to see if we can get it to start up. If you take one of these switches apart before, you know that this ribbon cable can be sort of tricky. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here that you can do. What I do is I take this ribbon cable, actually bend it just a little bit. So this part is bent down a little bit. So then I can fold it in here and you can see it's bent down as it's going into the connector. So then I just kind of wiggle it around. I don't force it in there. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit and there we go. Now it's back together enough to test. Let's plug in the battery and see if it turns on. Okay, there we go. Let's see what this shows. 0 0.3130. Okay, we got sort of the same thing. So I'm gonna try a known good battery and see if that helps us out any. Okay, now we got a known good battery. Let's see what happens. Point four zero, and we had something on the screen. Let's see if it'll turn on. Hey, there we go. This is great news. It's also fast charging, and there we go. Now for switch number one, we know all it needs is a new battery now, so I'm gonna get that battery installed, then we'll get it put all back together and get it cleaned up and ready for sale. Of course I didn't forget to put the speakers in. I was gonna cut this clip out, but I knew if I didn't show it, then a bunch of comments were gonna come in and say, you forgot the speakers. Don't forget the speakers. So we got the speakers installed. Now I'm ready to replace the battery. Don't ever use anything metal to pry up a battery. Yes, I am doing that here, but don't do this part the way I do it. I've replaced a ton of these, so I know how much force I can put on them without breaking them, without bending them too much. So just don't use metal if you're trying to replace these. And if you're not comfortable with it or don't know how to do it, just don't try it because these can start on fire very easily. I'm going to take some of this foam right here and put on the outside of this battery. That'll cushion it inside there and make sure it's not rattling around at all. So it doesn't have to be the whole thing. And this it, stuff is actually pretty hard to get up. It's not really made to be placed onto another battery, but I always use it just because then it's not rattling around inside there. Now I've got the foam on here and I put the tape on the back of it so it'll stick down. I use Tessa tape for this. Everything, all the parts and tools I use for all of these repairs are on my Amazon shop. The link to that is located in the description. And there we go. I'm gonna double check and make sure it does still work. Yep. This one does have some scratches on the screen. A little bit of dirt on it I can clean up too, make the screen look a little better. But now we just need to clean the thermal paste off of our heat sink and apply new thermal paste, put it all back together and we're ready to go. Okay, we got it back together, but we do need to test a few more things. You need to make sure the Joy-Cons both connect. And then I also do want to test the touch screen just to make sure that is fully working. And then I'll do a little more testing off screen that'll take a little bit longer just to make sure it's in good working condition. And remember this one did have damage on the game card slot as well. 
So, let's see if it works or not. Oh yeah, so that works good. Let's check the controller for connection. That one connects. Oh, that one does not connect. And you probably won't be able to see this, but I can see right down there, there is some corrosion there. So I'm gonna get that fixed right now, so then we can just call this one totally fixed. So I did have to take it all back apart because we need to get this entire rail out so I can clean it good. Now with all the screws along here removed and the ribbon cable disconnected, this will just pop out like this. Then there's a little pin in here. Just push through. There we go. Then we can get this piece out. Give it a nice good cleaning. Actually, this one looks really good. Oh, I took off the wrong one. This is the one that's corroded. Ah, well, at least we know this one's good. We'll put this one back together and get this one off. I'm using a sim tray bit to get the pin out. There we go. And here we go. Look at that. So here's the problem with our Joy-Con connection. Okay, so that's much better. The corrosion is all gone off of here. Now this part of the pins is not quite as shiny, but that is normally not a problem as long as there's no corrosion. As long as you get all the corrosion off so the corrosion doesn't keep happening, as long as the corrosion stops and it can, it's nice and clean, then usually that connection in that part will last as long as it normally would. There we go. And there we go, it works great. Okay, we've had this apart, fixed, back together, and then apart to fix something else, and now it's back together. Let's test the touch screen and a few other functions just to make sure all the main functions work, and then I'll test the rest off screen. So I'll test a few more things off camera, but switch number one is fixed. That one took a little longer than normal, which is pretty typical with liquid damage because there's usually more than one thing that's wrong, but the nice thing is all we had to replace was the battery. One down, 19 more to go. Now let's go to switch number two. And does it power on? Of course, hey, it, whoa, it does power on. Okay, cool. I just assumed that all of these wouldn't power on. Controllers work. So first the back plastic, then all the silver screws and the SD card slot, then the metal plate, then the heat sink, and here we go. It actually looks super clean. I was thinking maybe there was some sort of problem with it overheating. I really don't think it's actually overheating. I don't see any problems with the heat sink, the heat sink fins the thermal paste or the fan. The fan is absolutely clean. So this one, I'll have to test more off camera, but I see no problems at all. So switch number two, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with it. I'm gonna test it a little more off camera and do a little more extensive testing and take a little longer. And I'll come back and let you know if there's anything wrong. But right now, switch number two is fixed and we fixed two out of 20. Let's move on to number three. Ah! Probably a few more broken ones after that. All right, and here is number three. Let's see if it turns on. I can't imagine we're gonna get that lucky again. So let's see what happens when we plug a charger into it. We've got 0 0.3, 0 0.22. Okay, this one's sticking there pretty well. So let's take it apart and see what's causing the problem. All right, all the screws are out. Let's have a look. 
no immediate problems, no liquid damage, which is good news. So everything looks fine so far. Let's remove the battery connector so then we can test more stuff on the board. As you probably figured out by now, the first thing I do is test the capacitors around this chip and around this chip. That'll tell me if there is any problems on this chip, this chip, or the video chip on the other side. So this capacitor is shorted, but, it, but the actual capacitor is probably not shorted. It's probably just the circuit. So usually when this capacitor is shorted, sometimes it can be this chip. Usually it's the video chip on the other side. As you can see, all the other chips are fine. So what we need to do on this one is take the motherboard out and look at the video chip on the other side. And this right here is the video chip. We'll test this capacitor and see if it's shorted. It normally is when that other capacitor is shorted on the other side. And it is shorted. So most likely this video chip needs to be replaced. I'm going to take this to my microscope and soldering station. What you're going to see me do is remove this chip. I'm going to use some flux to put around here, and that flux will help the solder melt and flow once I apply the heat. And then I will test this capacitor to see if it's still shorted. And it probably isn't, and if that's the case, then I'll put on a new video chip, and we'll bring it back here and put it back in the switch to see if that'll fix it. So let's see if our short is gone with that chip replaced. And it is. Now let's see if the short is gone from the other side. And it is. Now that I think we have all the shorts fixed, all the chips fixed, I'm gonna connect a battery, a good battery to this, and then we'll check and see how it's charging. And it's charging at 0 0.40. And then it goes to 1.73. That's completely normal charging, so I think this board is probably fixed. Now I'm gonna get it back in the switch and see if it works. And it looks like we've got a normally charging battery. So this is good news. The only time that this sometimes causes a problem is every once in a while I'll find a battery where it will slow charge, but then it won't actually fast charge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in a known good battery just so I can test the basic functions of this, make sure the screen works and whatnot. And then we'll put this all back together and keep it on a charger for a while just to make sure that the battery's good. And we have our known good battery hooked up. And there we go. I'm gonna get it all back together and leave it on a charger for several hours, maybe even overnight, and make sure it charges up, and then we can test it further. So it looks like switch number three is fixed. So far, we're three out of three. You guys are giving me great luck. Let's move on to number four. So here's number four. Check for power. No power, of course. USB-C port looks fine. Let's see how it charges. We've got point four zero but nothing at all on the screen sometimes point four zero can be a normal slow charge usually it's up at point four six but it can go at point four zero so the problem with this is if it's point four zero if it's slow charging with nothing on the screen i don't know how to fix that i've not found the fix for that yet so I think for this one, I'm going to take the back cover off, put a known good battery in it, check for shorts on the board, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's open it up, see if there's any liquid damage. No, no liquid damage at all. Everything looks really good. So let's check for shorts on the board and see what we find. Once again, we'll check this one up by the charge chip. All right, we definitely have a short here. So we'll take this motherboard out and check that video chip again, see what that one looks like. All right, let's check this capacitor near the charge chip. 
definitely shorted, so we need to replace this, and hopefully that's all it needs. Let's see if the short on the video chip capacitor is gone. Okay, good. We're good there. Let's check the capacitor near the charge chip. That one's good. And that short is gone. Now we'll plug the battery in. What do you think? Is it going to charge normally? Here we go. Zero three nine zero four zero to zero. Now it should fast charge and it's fast charging. Yes, so number four is also a success. So far, this lot is going great. We are at four out of four. Number four, I do need to test a little bit more, make sure the battery's good and that sort of a thing. But so far, it looks like the motherboard is performing perfectly. So now it's time to move on to number five. Here's number five. No power. 0.21, 0.22, 0.23. Charger's kind of jumping all over, stuck at 0.25. What do you think? Is this going to be another video chip? I think it could be. Let's take it apart. Okay, and here we go. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Just like the others, looks really clean. Let's get this battery disconnected. And let's see if we have any shorts. Wow, okay, so there's, it's not actually shorted this time. That's pretty strange. So none of these are shorted and none of these are shorted. We got continuity through the coil. And if the fuse is bad, there would be nothing there. So I'm gonna try a known good battery and see if we get any power that way. And we get nothing. So nothing happens even with a good battery, which makes me wonder, it still could be the video chip. It's not as likely since there's no shorts on any of the capacitors around the chips, but it still could be the video chip. So I'm gonna get the motherboard out all the way and then we'll test that. So I pulled this ribbon cable up and I do see we've got some sort of liquid damage going on here. So that means this connector probably has it. Also, we need to check this connector. If we've got liquid damage on these connectors, that can cause no display. So you can see there's also some corrosion down in here. And same with right here. We'll be able to see how much damage there is after the motherboard is totally out. Oh yeah, we definitely got a problem here. Look at that. So that is the backlight connector. So we got another liquid damaged one. Okay, we've got definitely some. A lot of damage right in there, and possibly some. This is another BGA chip, so this one could be hard to get all the way clean. That could be a problem. Since there aren't any actual shorts on this, I'm gonna plug this battery in and then plug the charge cable in and see what kind of readings we get. Still at 0 0.40. Let's see if it jumps up and fast charges. Definitely not. So that's a bummer. It probably means there's some serious shorts on the back of this and most likely this main chip is probably shorted out. That being said, I am gonna put this back in and just see if we get any kind of picture when we put it back in with the backlight connector and ribbon cable cleaned. It might give us enough to get a picture. Sometimes these will slow charge and just never fast charge if there is damage on the board. And that can still work, that can be okay. But we won't know until we get it back together and see if we get any sort of picture on the screen. Okay, I have it together just enough to test it, just bare bones. Let's see if it'll turn on. Definitely doesn't turn on. Let's check what happens with the charger. Uh, 
Oh, wow, it does fast charge now. See, 1.81. There's just nothing on the screen. So since it does fast charge, that does give me a little bit of hope. I'm gonna put this motherboard under my microscope and check it out and see if I can figure out exactly what's causing the no display. So I checked it under the microscope and found that for sure the backlight ribbon cable is definitely bad. So if I wanna use this front case, I'll have to replace the digitizer at least. It is also possible the LCD is bad. So what I'm actually gonna do is wait until I get one that's one of these other ones where the motherboard is damaged or not fixable. And then I'll plug this motherboard into that and see if it works. I did take this motherboard and look under the microscope and found that this chip also had a little bit more corrosion under it. So I took a toothbrush and worked on it from each side and trying to, tried to get the bristles down inside into the solder balls to clean them off. And I think I did pretty well, but I won't know for sure until we can test it in another case. So for number five, we're gonna set it aside and wait till we have another switch where the motherboard is not fixable. And then we'll just plug this one in and see if this one works correctly. So, so far, we're at least four out of five, maybe five out of five. I'm not totally sure, but I have good feeling about this motherboard. So we might have fixed five out of five so far. I'll put part number two up on your screen. So just click on that and come hang out with me on part number two and see how many I can fix in part two. Thanks so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. And I hope you have a good day.